Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Gift Egwinu and I'm a front end developer. In today's video, I am going to be looking at and working with Noxt and specifically Noxt content module. This is a pretty new feature with Noxt that I want to try out and yeah, I'm pretty excited about it. So the Noxt content module acts as a Git based headless CMS for your Noxt application where you get to like manage content directly in your application and it helps you with like fetching it in Markdown and displaying it, um, displaying this content on your website. So we're going to be taking a look at how the whole entire process is and how to set it up and how to actually use it in this video so stick around to the end of the video if this is something you'd like to learn about in case you're not already familiar i'll start by explaining what noxt js is noxt is a Vue.js framework for building blazing fast web applications the reason why i like noxt is because it abstracts a lot of things you normally do in Vue, and you get a lot of things out of the box why should you bother using Nox? Nox is modular, meaning, like I said, it has a lot of things abstracted and you have a lot of modules available for you to use from getting PWA benefits to adding Google Analytics to using different types of CSS UI frameworks in your application. It's also very performant and the last and most important reason, it has a great developer experience. Let's move on to installing a bare minimum Nox application. I'll use create Nox app to install this application. When I do this, I'll get asked a couple of questions which I can either say yes or no to if I want any styling UI framework or if I want to use EXLint or testing. When I'm done with this, I can go ahead and run my application. And exactly we have it running. What is an module in Nox. Modules are extensions that can extend the core functionalities and add endless integration. Modules is something in Nox that I really find interesting because I only I have only scratched the surface of Nox, but finding out about modules just changed the entire thing for me. So right now there are a couple of modules that Nox have integrated. And there are also different modules from the community, but the ones that I'll be specifying here are the ones that are currently in documentation. And I'm going to be taking a look at one, which is the Nox content module. But there are others like the HTTP module. This is a very light way of like making HTTP requests in your Nox application. There is the Axios, there is a PWA module, there is an authentication module. But today we're going to be looking at the Noxt content module. When you're working on your Noxt application and you have to deal with, say, you're trying to create a blog, right? You would definitely need to manage content. Now, this is where Noxt content module comes in. It helps you write content in your Noxt application using either Markdown, JSON, YAML, or CSV files through a mongodb api and it acts like a git space headless cms also ships with some cool features some of which include the fast hot reloading development you can also write view components in markdown this is like a feature that viewpress already has if you don't know what viewpress is it's like a different static side gener generator for vgs it has full text search integrated has support for static site generation. I'll talk about this in a minute. It has this powerful query builder API like MongoDB. I'll show you what I mean by this. It also has syntax highlighting. You can generate table of content and so much more. So it just makes it a really great module to have whenever you're working with content related stuff so if you're working on building a blog or a marketing website this is like a very interesting module to try out in your nox application let's go ahead and install nox content we would use the command here and add nox content and when this is done is installing we'll configure the necessary 
items inside of nox.config.js file. So here we can see that we need to add a modules array which already exists. So we just go ahead and add the nox configuration nox slash content directly. After installing the module, I'll go ahead and create a folder in the root directory called contents and this is where we would save all of our markdown files. I'll create a home.md file just to show you what I can do. I'll add a front matter with a title and a description. I'll add the description as well. Now the module is going to pass any file markdown yaml file we create and generate the following properties by default created at and updated at is going to be added as well so let's try and run this application and i'll show you what is being generated when we create any markdown file so if you go to the dev environment and use underscore content to check for this would see exactly what was created during the same year, exactly title description as well. If I go back and add contents or a page, a body, a body to the page, this also gets auto-generated. And this is called, that is called the API. That was what I was talking about earlier when I said it has a MongoDB-like API. This is exactly what it is. We are going to try to recreate or create a blog layout. And with this, I already went ahead to use something called two blocks and it basically gives me a kind of layout that I would like to have. So it's called Tail blocks and it uses Tailwind CSS. I already went ahead to add the Tailwind module in my application. So I just need to look for the kind of layout that I want. And I want this for the blog. This is just static, by the way. It's just static content. The next thing that we'll do is to create a markdown for all of this and then fetch it into our component using the content instance this is globally available using this dot context which i'll show you how to do in a bit i went ahead and restructured the layout of my blog i have now a blog folder and within it an index folder and i created uh, two markdown files now i want to replace this with those markdown files let's see how to do this first of all i would like to fetch this into my components using the async data using async data to fetch it and i mentioned earlier that context content is available globally using this dot context or i could as also get it from the context instance so what i'll do here is i'll destructure context and get content from it and then because i already have a blog um i already have a blog folder within my content i'll just call it say content and call blog and then fetch it would go ahead and console this just to see that we are getting the right results that we want. I'm going to receive the first blog and the second blog. If I console this, I should get exactly the results. Yes, that's what I'm getting, the blog one and the blog two. So now I would just use it directly in my component. First of all, return articles and remove the console.log because we don't want it there anymore. Within my templates, I can go ahead and add the article so because of it is an array of objects i am going to use the v4 just to show you exactly that i'm getting it this is what it looks like but i don't want this so i will just remove that and use v4 to loop through this so i can fetch 
the date, the title, and the description. I'll take those out because I don't need them anymore. I just want only one of this so I can then loop through it. Now I'm going to go ahead and add the V4 loop. Article in articles and then add a key. The key should be the ID. Article.id. Now I'm having some ES links, so I'm just going to fix it. ESLint problems. Okay, yeah, just fix the last problem. Great. Now I can use it within my templates. I just want the date and the title and the description. Now I see the date, but this date format I don't really like. So we're going to change it later to something that's human readable. But for now, let's go ahead and add the title and the description. Great. Now that we have that, I'm just going to go ahead and make that date friendly by using a filter property. So I'm using a package called date FNS to do the formatting and I created a filter and added a format date here and I'm formatting it in such a way that it will return the day, the month and the year. We've completed the blog layout. Now I want to be able to link to a page, to a single blog page. So we'll go ahead and create an underscore slug dot view file. What this does is it will help us create dynamic pages. So for every page that I have slash blog slash first post or slash blog slash second post, it should display it directly using this component. So let's go ahead and create something simple for now. Just add a div and call that heading. And I'll still use the same method that I used earlier by fetching it using async data the same method but this time i'm adding a params also to this what this will help me do is to get the exact slog so that i can use it for displaying individual pages of our blog posts so let's go ahead and create this by calling content and i'm still calling blog but this time i would add a params as well so Right and add it, params.slog, and then I'll fetch. I'll change this to article because it makes more sense and just trying to be consistent. I'll remove the space because it's giving me problems and just put an underscore instead. So I'll change this to first blog with an underscore. And do the same for the other one. Now I can query this by doing in the browser slash blog slash first posts and slash second posts and I should be able to get the heading that I added in the templates yeah so this works now let's go ahead and replace this with actual content coming from the markdown file I'll take out that console and return article Then within the templates, we're going to use the Nox content component to display the page. Now, going back to the templates, I'll just add a bit of styling. So I want this to be article instead. And then make it container and MX auto, which would center the content. Now I'm going to go ahead and add the Nox content component I spoke about and passing documents passing the documents the document here will be article so what this would do is display the page like this would display the page content of the markdown inside of first block so here this is what we have here for first block and if I check the markdown that is exactly what I have as well 
mind you, it is not already it's not passing in the title of the blog posts, which is something we would need to add in ourselves, like the title and the description that I have here or the dates it was posted. So yeah, I also want to link it from the blog layout page. So I added a Nox link so I can just go there directly from the blog layout page as well. I've gone ahead and added the title and the date just as we have it here into the individual blog page as well. Because content is available globally, I have access to the title. I have access to the entire front matter. I also added styling to my markdown here. Uh, one powerful feature of Nox content is that you can do live editing on development mode by double clicking anywhere you're using it. So here, if I change this to Nox.js, automatically it adds the changes to my local directory. That is amazing. So you can just edit directly here on the browser without going back to the page. So if I check here, I see that the changes have been, has reflected on my Markdown file. The module also exposes an endpoint that you can use in your development mode to check out your entire content folder. Like I mentioned earlier, I have created a new one called blog. So I will just try and see what it looks like. Here, we can see our entire blog content. So I have two blogs, getting started and Nox documentation. And you can just see the entire content of your application. There are advanced things that you could do with this. You could, you can use operators and you can also use nexted properties to only return what you want. Finally, when we are done, and we want to deploy our application, we can deploy it as a Jamstack application or a stat static generated application using that target static, which already comes bundled in the application when I was installing it. So I'm going to use the command yarn generate to show you what a deployed version of this blog we just built would look like. Basically, static statically generated will only output HTML files. So your entire blog would be deployed as HTML files. So you can see here that we generated a blog directory with first blog and second blog. And in the terminal, you can see that it generated routes for, it generated four routes as we know that we have a blog route, a blog slash first blog and blog slash second blog. So now you can deploy this using either Netlify or Vessel or whichever um, service you use for deploying a static site. I must say the Nox content module is really interesting and I enjoy trying it out. Let me know in the comment section if you have any specific question. There are also things that you could do that I did not cover in this video, like extending it, like using prism.js for um, displaying code blocks or adding more functionalities but i'll leave the link to the documentation in the description so you could also check those out this was really nice and i'm looking forward to exploring more on noxt.js thank you so much for watching and see you in my next video <laughs>